After Ireland, we flew southeast 3,400 kilometers away from the setting sun to the Mediterranean coast of Turkey. Antalya is a sprawling beach resort city of over one million people. We stayed in a residential neighborhood, quiet except for the occasional rooster. We were close to a university, so there were many nearby coffee houses. And once a week, a nearby parking lot became our wonderful neighborhood market where a week of fresh produce cost less than $5 and nearby restaurants offered a full meal for as low as $2.50 per person. The area was very walkable with some pretty well-placed pedestrian bridges and lots of access to buses as long as you're not in a hurry and don't really care when you'll arrive at your destination. The tram system is much less extensive, but much more reliable with more frequent and on-time trains, especially when going in and out of Old Town. Founded as Atalia in the Hellenistic Kingdom of Pergamon in 150 BCE, the strategic port city was bequeathed to Rome less than 20 years later. The most famous ancient monument in Old Town is Roman. Hadrian's Gate was built in 130 CE to honor the visit of the Roman Emperor. It was so heavily used that deep ruts were worn into the ancient stone by chariot wheels. The Romans and Byzantines left their marks on Italia for 11 more centuries. until the Seljuk Turks captured the city in the early 13th and renamed it to Antalya, though Greeks still use the original name today. The beautiful fluted minaret was built by the Seljuks and is the symbol of Antalya today. The Ottomans ousted the Seljuks in 1391. Their mosques and houses are their most visible legacy in Old Town. There's a wide variety of shopping in Old Town. From open air street bazaars to the indoor Old Bazaar, aptly named as it's been around since 1499. This 13th century Selchuk Madrasa was reopened in the year 2000 as an indoor bazaar. So wonderful that some customers just never leave. North of Old Town, on every Friday, these streets are lined with vendors, forming a massive multi-block farmer's market. The Old Town of today has palm lined streets, cliffside cafes, and many beautiful parks. Republic Square is a common meeting place with its distinct statue celebrating Mustafa Kemal Ataturk and the founding of the Turkish Republic. Below the cliffs, Antalya Port is the heart of the old city. There are many boats that let tourists see the sunset with pirates, like Captain Jack Sparrow or Davy Jones. But the jetty at the end of the port is where locals go to hang out with friends, have some drinks, and watch the sun set over the Taurus Mountains. One of the great things about Antalya is that there are so many good places to catch amazing sunsets. The Konyalti district stretches west of Old Town along the Mediterranean shore 
to the foot of the western range of the Taurus Mountains, the largest mountain complex in Turkey. Mostly undeveloped until the 1980s, Kanyalti is primarily residential, with hundreds of apartments no more than a couple kilometers from the water. The sea is a beautiful deep azure color. The beach is rocky and loose, which makes walking a bit of a challenge. But it also creates a fascinating rattling sound when the waves retreat. From Kanyalti, you can see across the bay, back past Old Town to the Lara district. Lara is another long, stretched out part of Antalya. Is very close to the airport and is known primarily for its luxury resort hotels, many of which are all inclusive. Though there are also residential sections and beautiful coastal public parks with wonderful sunsets. The biggest attraction in Lara is the multi-kilometer Lara Beach, conveniently accessed by this bus depot with a large adjacent park, perfect for family barbecues. Lara comes from a word in the pre-Greek Luvian language for sand. And Lara Beach is the longest sandy beach in Turkey and unusual among all Mediterranean beaches. Most of the beachfront businesses cater to tourists and were closed for the season. The Dudin stream runs north to south in the eastern Antalya suburbs, splitting the Lara district as it flows to the Mediterranean. The northern stream is accessible by city bus and a short walk takes you to a very nice park. At first, the stream doesn't seem like much, but it builds strength farther down. To see more, you descend into a cavern. Heating the low ceiling and wet floor warning signs is a must. Moving outside the cave, downstream, the water gets more turbulent. Though this duck managed to find a calmer spot. Farther down, the water was even stronger, nearly drowning out the sounds of the resident bats. At the southern end of the stream, Another lovely park is free to enter. Down here, the water was even higher and stronger. Finally, the stream abruptly ends, falling off of the cliff directly into the Mediterranean Sea. <laughs> 